Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Martin Schubel. I'm at, from the Technical University of Denmark, and I would like to share my experience building as a chip from Chisel Source with a fully open source tool flow within one semester with 12 students. So we take open source software kind of for granted. We are used to GCC that can compile Linux, actually Perkis DCPP stack bars, probably most of our devices. This is open source, one of the first open source projects. Linux is used to run servers, many of them in the internet. It runs on half of the mobile phones. It's used in embedded devices. When we talk about the internet, one of the very common servers is Apache Web Server, which is open source. We can run Java and the Java with the machine to build our cloud apps. And actually most languages we use in today uh, have an open source compiler, which is free to use. It was a big difference to the 80s and 90s last century. In the hardware world, it's a little bit different. Some hardware projects are in open source, for example, in Chisel, the rocket chip, also the Patmos processor we will use in this project. Tools we are used to are mostly closed source, even if they're free, like for FPGAs, or model sim is also free versions, but still they are closed source. We cannot tinker with them. If you want to do research in synthesis tools, we cannot get the source for synopsis tool, for example, but it's getting better. We have some exceptions. We have Chisel as a modern hardware construction language. That's why we're meeting here. We're using Verilator for simulation. We have Yosis and APC for synthesis. Then producing a chip is usually super expensive. And it also needs expensive tools. And it needs for <clears throat> a PDK, a so-called PDK, it's a production development kit that describes the process of the fab. So each fab has its own PDK. And to get it, it's closed source, you need to sign an NDA. And we can get a little bit cheaper by sharing a waiver with several projects that is called a multi-project waiver. So now Google enters the hardware scene. So Tim Mansell, software engineer, by his own definition, says what is missing to make hardware design as easy as software development. We, at the end of Moore's law, we need more specialization hardware. We, we don't have enough digital designers. Same thing is true in, in, in Copenhagen area. I got numbers that we are missing 20 hardware designers per year just in the Copenhagen area. So how do we motivate students to learn hardware design, to dig into this and not just writing apps for a mobile phone? An open source infrastructure, open source is also a goodie, a plus, and a free chip. So Google actually, if your design is open source, if you manage to tape it out, Google pays the production cost and delivers you even PCBs with a mounted chip with some infrastructure. If you don't have a closed source project, you can pay $9,000, I think, which is also not very big and you're part of this multi-project waiver. So Google teamed up with Skywater. Skywater is a so-called fab. They're producing chips in 130 nanometers. And this was the former fab of Cypress, a memory device company. So Skywater together with Google puts this PDK into open source. You remember this production development kit. This describes the Skywater fab and the PDK is integrated with open source tools. And as I said before, if the design is open source, Google pays the production. So open source tools, we are here at the Chisel community conference. So Chisel is a modern design language. I'm using it since 2012. I'm teaching digital design with Chisel. So my students all come out with Chisel knowledge and the Patmos processor, which we are using is in Chisel. Simulation, we sell ourselves use Treadle for unit tests for some stuff. For the full system, we are using Verilator because we are simulating external memory. And for the chip tests, we have to use Ecos Verilog because there are some event-based simulation needed. Synthesis, so Yosis is an open source synthesis tool. I learned just not too long ago that this was actually a Bachelor of Science project at TU Vienna from 2013. And this is interesting for me because originally I'm from TU Vienna as well, but I didn't realize this project until I heard it when I was in California or something. And now it's used for most open source tool flows for hardware design. You can also use Yosis to produce bit streams for some Xilinx FPGs. APC, so those are an open source tools integrated in Yosis that translates 
designed to primitives and does a mapping. And then we have something called Open Roads, a collection of several other tools, does the rest, floor planning, placement, clock to routing. So the idea is that this whole design flow is kind of running <clears throat> in the background without the human in the loop. And here you see the flow as it is for us. We starting from chisel design sources, let's say the Patmos design. These are compiled, these are Scala files compiled to Java class files. And when we execute those class files, this is what we call the chisel compiler, simply generates Verilog, a single Verilog file, which is a design source. That one now enters the open lane flow with synthesis, with uses and ABC, static timing analysis. There is test insertions. I didn't know about it actually. And then the open road flow, again, does this flow planning, placement and so on. And until the end, we get GDS files, which we can then send to the fab. And in the early days, back then, this was sent on a tape physically. And so this process is called tape out. So when you have got your tape out of your buildings and you have taped out. So this still terminology is still used. Of course, you have now GitHub, just having a GitHub on eFabless, you make an account, having a link to the GitHub, and then you press buttons for pre-check and buttons for tape out. Something else, so eFabless is organizing it, but they're also providing something which is called Caravel. This is a harness for the design. It is a 10 square millimeter user area. And the harness itself contains a RISC-V process, a small one as a management core. You have some communication with the US. Carvel also integrates a tool flow. You're running, installing the tool when you run some scripts as Caravel. And it also includes a lot of testing for pre-check before tape. But if you even test, so you should clone the Caravel repository, but you have to change it. And it even checks if you have changed the readme. So if you don't change readme, actually you will not finish the pre-check test. So it is graphically, so your design is this 10 square millimeters. In the middle, you see the Caravel design. It's on the bottom is a RISC-V process, so two memories. And then your design is placed into this one user space. And this is an, the chip you get back. So you deliver just your hardened design and eFabless adds their Caravel around it. And then it's put to a multi-project if I said before. So this is an example, I think MPV1 or MPV2, because you see there's still two, two missing here from this 42 chips. It's a six times seven, so it's 42 chips on this multi-project The first, first one was not fully subscribed, but the other ones are now heavy oversubscribed. So a uh, idea for a class. So we at our section have don't know these open source tools, this uses flow and everything. And look, a colleague from me, you joined me on this lecturing, and I myself have no, no ASIC backend at all, backend experience at all. We're using FPGAs. We do play partner on FPGAs. That's our synthesis. So what do we do? If you don't know about, then we make a special class. Let's learn together with the students, and we do a special course. I was asking around students who had me before in digital electronics, and then 12 joined, most of them fourth semester. So I had them in second semester, a year before in digital tonic, and then they joined a year later in this course. The, and then using an open source design, the Patmos, which I mentioned before, which is our research platform, and then build all these Q components, learn the tool flow, and then hopefully get a chip back from Google Skywater. So what is, uh, where can we start with? What do students know? So they had, Digital Electronic 1 and 2, so that one, electrical, electronics as well. So no basic Digital Electronics, Boolean Algebra. They did a little bit HDL in the first semester, then they had to switch to Chisel in the second semester with me. And their final project is a vending machine built on top of it, built in an FPGA board, so real with switches and everything. And the vending machine is basically a state machine with data paths. So it's not a very complex, it's a very small design, so to say. And they're used to, drive Xilinx Vivado. They have no other ASIC background. Then we use the Patmos project. It's a time predictable process. So it's intended for real-time systems. And this was for back then, 10 years ago, almost part of a larger European commission funded project, which was actually a multi-core processor with also time particular network on chip and time predictable memory controller. And we made everything, almost everything 
almost everything open source from the start on. Patmos itself was written in VHDL originally. And when I had a research visit at UC Berkeley, 2012 around, I got exposed to Chisel and that takes, took this as an exercise to learn Chisel to port Patmos from VHDL to Chisel. Here's a schematics of our designs, a gray part on the left side is a part of the Caravel, the RISC-V processor connected to a wishbone bus, bus sorry, and that one we can use to access our boot logic, have a shared memory and so on. The yellow parts are already done. We're given this part of the Patmos project, possess itself, you at GPL control and so on. And the green stuff, boot logic, boot memory, internal SRAM, shared SRAM, SPI, DRAM control, this was all done to exist certain week semester course. So we split the 12 students in working groups. One group, the general tool flow, getting this running, how to do the hardening, server setup. We have set up our own servers for this. One group was doing an SPI controller. On top of this, another group was doing a memory controller, translating from burst requests to SPI commands. And then we have this loadable boot memory. So original partners has a read-only memory to boot with as a bootloader contained that one downloads a program from zero port. We could do the same, but we were a little bit unsure if this all works. So we actually made this boot memory write table. So we write from the RISC-V core into this boot memory to download programs. So we can even start this small test program, even when our external memory interface does not work, get something to run. We have even added a small state machine, which writes hello world in Morse code on one pin. So everything breaks, I hope at least this state machine will run. Yes, and then we played also with the RAM, RAM compiler, open RAM, but this is failed a little bit because it had a lot of design errors with the Skyward process. I think at the end of the day, we used predefined memories from the Caravel. Finishing, so, we worked in parallel and at the end, there's integration phase. And sadly, it's at the end, because this gives some issues. We had many, many pre-check errors. Could do a lot of time to fix them. So we missed the MPV, MPW around six by really by hours. So we were sitting midnight, night, but okay. But then weeks later, MPV seven opened up and we are immediately run again, pre-check, tape out, and we have him taped out successfully in MPV7, and we are in position three. So the third design, which is good, because uh, this multi-project waivers are oversubscribed and there's a lottery, but you get more tickets when you submit earlier. So we hope, cross your fingers, that we will get selected in MPV7. What did we learn? Yes, it is doable in one semester, even if it, it's a tape out in during summer and not at the end of the semester. But we did it with mostly four semester students. So before even the bachelor project. It is not as simple as FPGA synthesis, even if it was intended to have a no human in the loop flow. There were humans in the loop. Maybe it will come. There's no play button like on Platos or. Yes. We should have run the hardening and pre-check earlier. Actually, I did a small experiment myself a few weeks ago, took just a test design and run all hardening, pre-check, everything, including a tape pod. No problem at all with a small test design. We should have done this early on, incrementally adding stuff and seeing which star, which stuff gives us errors. And yes, memories are a pain. So we had a group really fighting with this memory compiler and memory placement that didn't automatically place a correct. So yes, memories in ASIC designs are a pain. So it's not like an FPGA, which just they're there. And you're writing a chisel sync memory and you get it. So you have to use, a, we had to wrap our memories into black boxes and then using that black boxes to for synthesis and then placing them the hard memory mark memories in there. It's just painful. Yes, in Schlesen was not straightforward. It was not easy. I even needed at one point some help from a Slack channel because then told me, okay, you cannot use tool X from the Ubuntu installation because it's not new enough. You have to install it from source. There's also information. So it's a, I think it's a fast process, all this open source thing. And in fast processes, the documentation is always a little bit behind. 
This is our final chip, which we managed to tape out. So you see, it's about, I see, 20% of the resources. We have three memories, which are quite large, as we see. And yes, that is what we sent to eFabless. And you see, MPV6 was oversubscribed. We see 90 projects out of 40 places. And we are still counted in MPV6, even if we didn't have tape, but actually they measured all projects and not only the successful tape. So you see here, this gray box, it's Denmark, that's us. I guess I know someone else. A summary. So I think the open source move approaches hardware. Finally, I'm super happy about this. Not only is open source nice, it also makes life way easier. You don't have to sign anything. You don't have to, yeah. Anyway, so there are chips available. There's a rocket chips, there are others in Verilog, VHDL, Chisel is growing also. And it is possible to have a complete open source flow from Chisel down to chips and doing this in one semester with four semester students. This process is sponsored by Google, teaming up with Skywater. Skywater is a fab. The PDK was put open source and sponsor and sponsor Google actually pays if you're an open source design the chips and PCBs with mounted chips. And I have to say, it was quite fun to do that stuff, to learn this stuff. And I guess I will use this flow for further project as well. I'm looking forward also to see this flow and this Skywater multi project was popping up in papers. The nice thing would be we can again start to compare designs against each other because all use the same process. Yes, and getting out a real chip was, I think, a very strong motivation for students who were really working hard. And I think I've motivated 12 students to continue with digital design and fill up <clears throat> the open positions we have here. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you get excited on this open source process. If I'm not live, sorry, so you can't ask me questions, but you can write me an email. You can ping me on maybe other channels and bye. Thank you.